Love it because it is an unassuming but very special place to, to all of us, a well-kept secret. <laughs> um, but we like to share, so with this in mind, I felt it was time to honour George Lanchester for choosing Chumley to retire to and to mark his life with a blue plaque not only to honour a talented man and his family, but to attract more interest in Chumley and all its other fascinating history. My connection and interest in George began in 1965 when I came to live in Chumley, age nine. Um, I knew Steve Lanchester, George's second wife, um, more so because she was my grandmother's best friend and we popped into each other's houses frequently. So. That's how I got to know George, although he was very elderly at the time. He was a benevolent um, atmosphere in the house. Um, Steve was a prodigious woman, a fierce and uh, an ex-matron, and she would tell us off after school for eating ice cream and whatnot. Um, but, but I loved her dearly and uh, miss her to this day. Um, I think it was through her as well that I understood the importance of the Lanchester family, and, and which is why we're here today, really. Um, now to thank, so I'd like to thank of only a few people, but over the last 18 months, Chris Clark has um, really been a great uh, bolster to me to push this to a fruition and uh, I thank him very much for that and Peter Dunn our parish clerk for helping me with the um, planning permission which is um, extraordinarily difficult just to put a circular blue disc on a wall um, it's only delayed slightly and it will soon be actually up on the wall to Sue Croft of the North Devon District Council for her encouragement and generous donation to help with the finances and Kevin Brady whose uh, material you will see in a small exhibition in the town hall um, information and photographs gleaned from uh, when he knew the Lanchester household as a child so have a chat to Kevin afterwards um, and, and to say you know that there is a delicious tea later on should you so feel hungry. Uh, I'll just finish um, by saying thank you very much to Hilary Sanders, whose house this is. Um, she agreed very cheerfully to the idea, and she's certainly very proud of what she calls her Lanchester kitchen, and uh, various uh, interesting door mechanisms on some of the rooms that George invented in later life. Um, we would have hoped it would have been installed today, but... Um, it will, in in very short time, be up there, and, and uh, you'll see it in a minute. Um, so thank you, really, and thank you all for coming. It's a marvellous turnout and magnificent cars. So I'll hand you over to Chris to give you a bit more of a background information on the Lanchester family and trust. Well, thank you, Debbie. I have to say she's... She's very calm and reserved about all this, and I'd, I'd like to. I know how much work Debbie's done, and uh, it's tremendous. And she's put her hand in her own pocket to finance some of this, and she's a great inspiration for the village. And I, I think she's done so well. No, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been told I must mention that don't go afterwards because in the town hall is the. George Lanchester presentation that's been laid out, as well as the special cakes, teas, coffees, and all the rest of it. After this little ceremony, make sure you go to the town hall. But anyway, yeah, I'm Chris Clark. I'm a Lanchester historian, and proud to be so. And uh, I've been studying the Lanchester brothers for many a year now. Uh, I started when I was 14, some 20 years ago. And uh, it's, uh, oh, I don't laugh that much. Uh, it's, a, it's a delight to do it, and we're forever finding out more things about the Lanchester brothers. There were eight in the family, and what a prolific family it was. Artists, painters, uh, architects, but really were concerned with the double-decker bus that's coming past. <laughs> Yes, 
laid plans, eh? Yeah. Should we just ignore them, or what? Shall we? Okay. I'll talk later. Alright, so, Lancaster, fantastic band. There's say eight brothers and sisters, all supreme in their own right, in their own sphere of activity. Frederick Lanchester, as you may know, is regarded as one of the world's geniuses. Over 400 patented inventions, from colour photography to poetry, commended by the Poet Laureate. Uh, anything you want to think of, Frederick Lanchester was involved, normally with his brother George as well. From the, first, the very first principles of flight, some eight years before the Wright brothers flew, Mo and many people say more important even than the motor vehicle side, which they're generally well known for. And on motor cars, I think it was the auto car that said 48% of all the things on a present motor car were designed by Lanchester. So, really prolific family. Uh, I didn't ever meet George, sadly, but I know a lot about him. But I did meet Steve, and I came in here many times with my wife Lynn. She actually found our dog. Uh, it, we chose the dog, I should say, and what a woman she was. I remember going to the hotel and she said, we'll go there for a meal. And when I thought, well, I'm a gentleman, I must pay. And I tried to do it secretly. And then uh, when the waiter came over, she said in her strident voice, where's the bill? I can't do Scottish room. And I said, is it actually the gentleman with you has paid? My goodness, she really <laughs> tore into him. It, well, he felt about two foot small at the end. A great family, and it's lovely to be back here for this pack. So we're here to celebrate Lanchester. Um, one of the things about Lanchester, we, there's books written about it now, which you'll see in the town hall, and we're gradually getting this known. But what we have done is formed the Lanchester Trust. Oh, you're not holding the plaque anymore. <laughs> At the bottom of the, uh, of the wall plate, you'll see the Lanchester Trust. And we are in the Lanchester Trust, very proud to help sponsor this blue plaque. And uh, with the other trustees, Eric here and Malcolm somewhere there, the three of us working hard to get this right. Um, what else can we say? I think, what else could we say? Yes, I'm sure he would. All right. If we can hang on just a minute, Richard. We're trying to do this Lanchester Trust, and I'm sure this will really put Lanchester on the map. And Eric here, from the Lanchester Trust, the trustee, is just going to say a few words about what we're trying to achieve in, well, as of now, in the next few months and the next few years. Thank you. Yes, Lanchester um, and the Lanchester Brothers are a, <clears throat> a sort of engineering enigma. They've been in the structure of British engineering for, for 60 years, I suppose, from the, when they started. All these cars were actually built by the company when George was in. George. They weren't uh, built when Frank, so these are really George's cars. But it, they did a lot more than that. And what they did principally was they were innovative and they were incredibly skilled in engineering terms. What we really are trying to achieve is recognition of that. I want to do it by getting the name better known uh, and, and put on buildings and uh, perhaps a, a, a monument or a, a, a statue but also to provide uh, awards and scholarships for people in engineering and in design, not just in the motor engineering, but really to sponsor British engineering and British design innovation, because there's a lack of that. You know, you tend to go, and it's probably soft engineering. Like, there's no computer men around, are there? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it nowadays is what I would choose to call soft engineering. We're really interested in innovation, hard engineering and good design and we'd like to sponsor that as best we can with as much as we can <clears throat> so that's what we're here to do trying to do and, and we're getting there we're getting there so uh, over the next few years i hope we'll be able to award a few lanchester scholarships and a few uh, uh, but they won't uh, i don't think they'll be with microsoft <laughs> or indeed apple <laughs> they'll involve metal <laughs> A gentleman to speak to you for a little while, and this fellow's come up on the train, four trains from West Sussex, Chichester, especially for this event. 
As, as have the cars, as you can see there, West Sussex, Bristol, South End, North Wales, Herefordshire, well, all over, especially for this event. So we'd like to introduce George Lanchester's grandson, Richard. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for coming out. Uh, I'm delighted to um, see the progress of the Lanchester Trust, because... Uh, I've noticed, and I'm sure some of you also, that for the last year or two, there's been a lot of talk about how Britain has a great engineering tradition, but we're in danger of losing it and forgetting about it. And at a time when we can no longer think that forever we can be importing the manufacturers of uh, the far corners of the planet, we need to keep our traditions going. And the other side is to stress the importance of having a broad and connected range of interests, because the main feature of the, of the 20th century really was people developing more and more narrow specializations and drastically losing sight of the big picture. And I think many of the problems that we're beginning to recognize in the 21st, in the 21st century are problems where people fail to see the big picture. So these are the main themes of the Lanchester Trust, and I would like to highly commend them for this important viewpoint. They really have caught the spirit of the moment. It's been in the papers very much, and television, radio, news, and discussion programs for the last year or two. We need to rebuild our engineering traditions in the country. So thank you very much for that. And um, it's, it's great to be here again in North Devon. So that's really the main thing I wanted to say, and thank you very much. That's good. Okay, so this is it. We are going to... Has anyone seen this? Had a sneaky look yet? No. That's good. You're fibbing, I know. Right. So now, this is the plaque. As... Well, this is in the best bureaucratic terms. It's not on the wall. You know, red tape and all that. But we'll pretend it's on the wall. And now Richard would like to unveil the plaque. In all its glory. That's rather grand, isn't it? Over here. <laughs> Can you all read it? Can you turn around, Richard? Okay. You'll have another chance to see this when the planning department issue yeah. their final edict. There you are, so I'll read it out for those at the back. Chumley Parish Council, George Lanchester, 1874-1970, engineer, inventor, designer, with his brother Frederick, Lan Lanchester built the first all-British four-wheel petrol car, the 1895 Lanchester. George lived here, 2011 the plaque was up for Lanchester Trust. Be good to see it on the wall one day. <laughs> I'm sure that it'll be in the box for you all to see. Are there any other? Okay. Okay, um, the Lanchester owners give you a final fan, fanfare, I believe. But um, I'd like to thank uh, the parish council here in Chumley for succeeding where we in Sussex failed. Because my grandfather was actually born and uh, his brother, older brother lived in a house in Brighton, Church Street, Brighton, which is uh, now owned by a large property company. We tried unsuccessfully to get a plaque put up there because the building belonged to a large property company and it would have to be discussed by a small panel and then submitted to an annual general meeting. And they already had the agenda set for the following year's meeting and so on and so on and so on. And the whole project ground to a halt completely. Chumley has succeeded where the rest of our family in the South Coast and Brighton failed. Okay, come and have a look at the plaque. Remember to go to the town, we'll be a cup of tea and a cake, and uh, have a look at the demonstration. Okay, thanks very much for coming, and thank you once again, the Parish Council, the District Council, and especially Debbie.